Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Meaningful People podcast. This is a different type of episode. We are calling this the Spotlight Series. I myself uh, went to the home of Shlomo Ari Gazin from Zusha. Recently, they have gone super viral, amassing hundreds of thousands of followers on social media because of their new type of music they've been writing. So the Spotlight Series, which we'll have every now and then here featured on Meaningful People, is sort of like a Meaningful People on the road where we're speaking to people who have gone viral, who have been in the spotlight. Maybe it's a Jew that's featured on ESPN. Maybe it's a Jew that has this amazing idea in a community and we want to get them into the spotlight. So hope you enjoy this episode. Of course, I wanted to say a big thank you to our friends at Collars & Co. You see the shirt I am wearing right now. This is... The shirt I wear, Moshe Bussin, the quadruplex shirt right here. Fellas, look at this. And listen, wives, you want your husband to look good. You want him to be comfortable. And I mean, those two things are super important. You need to go to collarsandco.com. Make sure to use promo code MEANINGFUL for 15% off. It is never too late to join the Collars & Co. family. So many of you are already a part of it. But you know this strong collar, the comfortable shirt. That combo makes for the perfect experience. That's why you need to go to collarsandco.com, use promo code MEANINGFUL for 15% off. And of course, our friends at Alpert & Associates. Okay, maybe you're living paycheck to paycheck and you don't want to be living paycheck to paycheck, right? You want to live a life of financial freedom. You need a financial advisor. You need Moshe Alpert. So go ahead and send an email to alpertmoshe at gmail.com. You can get a free consultation. You need a financial planner in your corner. You can give them a call as well at 718-644-1594. That's 718-644-1594. Give Moshe a call and get started on the path of financial freedom. And of course, it's not an episode of Meaningful People unless I give a shout out to my friend Isaac Newman. His mother, she was a special, special woman. She really, really was. And if there's an ounce of any inspiration you get from this episode, I want you to really Think in your mind that it should be as close for Hanashama. Thank you, Isaac. Once again, this is a different type of episode. It's more like a special edition. Back with you with an episode with Momo next week of the Meaningful People podcast. Until then, enjoy this Spotlight episode. We are on our way to film the first ever Spotlight episode of Meaningful People, a new series. We're heading to the home of Azusha. So follow along. Okay, I'm so excited to be here in the home of Shlomo Ari Gazin, also known as Zusha, with brother Zach over here. And um, as I walked in, we were waiting a little bit, we were setting up, uh, you guys are creating a song. And it's something that you you are doing recently a lot of. Um, not that you haven't created songs before, but you're just doing it a little bit different. Um, your social media fame but it represents way more than just social media fame has risen like crazy over the last couple of months um, with creating songs during Sphere, specifically with household items, maybe a Febreze bottle, some Kleenex tissues and some, and some tunes to it. So I guess in your own words, if you can sort of describe what the last few weeks have been like and how this got started, where this idea came from and we'll go from there. Totally. Figure it out. So, um, yeah, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. It's, this has been something we've been speaking up for a long time, just like creating songs with just Shlomo and myself. And, um, I kind of have a background in ele- like electronic music type of thing. And it just never really made its way to the Zusha front, even though when I met Shlomo, that's what I was doing. And yeah. so I think it's, it's, it's certainly fun. And I think it's funny that it came out during Sphere specifically when you can't, use instruments and we were like what should we do should we just do nothing like right and then we were thinking like should we do acapella stuff like everyone does and it just like wasn't really our vibe and we're like if we're gonna do something we have to do it different we have to do it like zusha why aren't we zusha so we kind of came across this idea of just like let's just see if we can use instruments they use like uh found sound things like things that are clearly not instruments and i think shloma asked uh his rabbi he can tell you about that that whole yeah, fun yeah, process. We had, a, we had um, a very thorough conversation with my Rav and Baruch Hashem, we arrived at, at a solution and a way which we could do it. Uh, in particular, making sure it was visually clear 
like the composition of the song was from right. objects as opposed to instruments and vocal as opposed to anything else and um it was really it was really special to kind of get creative even in Pesach there and even in the yeah for sure and, and and what for those who don't know um again social media you went from like 20,000 followers to 110,000 on Instagram on TikTok you 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 just started from scratch it almost yeah. and it just blew up so i think it's safe to say that specifically the song world to come has been heard and seen by maybe close to 10 million people that's that's just like the numbers in terms of 84,000 people sharing it on social media plus which is is crazy a lot of the comments and i'll read one of them over here <laughs> oh one of the comments here uh is i would love to read a translation of this so that speaks volumes many of the comments and another one is i don't i can't understand what they're saying but it's fire and there are tens of thousands of comments, right? Specifically, the song "World to Come," right? Uh, the song that you that you guys put out. What was the process in building that, putting it together, and the response? Does that shock you that almost ten million people are connecting to the song, which is about Olmaba? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean. Uh... We are pretty much doing things like we always do them. I think for us, this has been a process of trying as many different things as possible. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time already, I'm sure, you know. Yeah. For us, it's like we wanted to explore something new and try a bunch of new things. And we felt like we've done so much of, we feel like to some degree, like we pushed ourselves in that way, like the Zusha vibe until now. Like we really went all out in that direction. And we came to a point where it's like we wanted to try something new. And I think the people are people are responding because it's more, I think, more like upbeat, more, I wouldn't say joyous, but it's like makes you dance a little bit more. And I think for this kind of music, which is like basically taking a Pasuk, taking a, a Torah verse and a Torah idea, it's almost like making it a mantra. And like this genre of um, more dancey or like electronic music, it fits well with that. And it, yeah. you don't even need to know what they're saying. That's like the beauty of it. You know, when we first started, we had a friend that worked for uh, Sony and he took our music, like our first album with it. He took our, our album and he like showed it to everyone. And they basically came back and they're like, this is great. You know, why don't you guys write something in English and, yeah. and, uh, and send it back and we'll take a look at it. And at the time we were just like super bummed because English just was never our comfort zone. That's interesting, you know, because there are a lot of there are a number of creators in the Jewish music space that are creating English music. And even there is meaning behind it, right? Whether it's Alex Clare or a guy like Jericho or Ellie Schwabel, they're creating English music. And, and I think that music has the ability to, you know, get picked up by multiple audiences. But again, and Shlomo, you'll, you'll give me, try to give me some insight into this, a song about, about Ilma Ba, about the world to come. What does that mean to millions of people who are not religious, Jewish? Maybe they are. Maybe some of them are. But let's be. Let's say. Let's say I most of them most aren't. Of them aren't. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, right. Probably Gentiles. Right. So. So. Mm. You know, I was speaking to my team before this. So, like, listen, algorithm, algorithm. I said, algorithm. Are you kidding me? It's Hashem. Hashem picks. <laughs> Hashem created the algorithm. What is it about that specific nigan, that specific song, that you think spoke to so many people? It's a good question. I, I don't have a, a, a certain answer, but I could I could posit that there's a few factors here. One is to many <clears throat> who aren't Jewish, it's exotic, it's unique. It's um, they've never heard anything like that before. Second of all, my background is in leading the tibur, leading the tibur and and, and tefillah and you know connecting new melodies to old to ancient words and so i'm kind of doing what i've always done it's yeah. just zach's preparing a whole retinue of, of beautiful beats to kind of encompass us and then now that there's this vibe going on what's on top of that what's at the heart of all of that and then i'm searching we're finding sometimes zach will find something sometimes i will find something and we're putting it in um, so I think that it's the first kind of time they're getting to see a little bit inside the base Knesset. Yeah. Like inside the, when a chazan is trying to find uh, the right melody for the right lyrics. 
You know, obviously, Kol Yisrael is not something that we sing in in davening, but it's something that we lean kind of uh, every year lanes in their own home a little bit. You know, these Mishnayos, this Mishnah from Sanhedrin, and so it's it's almost like a glance, a window into into a life that they'll never live, and that's kind of interesting to see. I think it doesn't hurt that there's a cute little baby in there. Yeah, <laughs> my wife says that's the reason. <laughs> has has Febreze reached out at all, like to some? Not yet. Some not Kleenex. Enough. Nothing. It's terrible. Man, How you many guys. Videos do we have to make <laughs> right now? You, yeah. but but like it's really cool. You guys have. I don't know if this is intentional, but you're you enter this whole new genre of yeah. of creating. We want to be as create. Like, listen, our our feeling is like Judaism. Yeah, and our Torah should be. Just as competitive, just as good, if not the best music in the world. Like it shouldn't just be, we make the best Jewish music. Like that was never really our goal. And so now it's kind of like exciting because finally, we've been doing this again for a long time. And finally we're getting to this place where it's like other people can tap into. Like we finally found a vessel yeah. that people can connect to just like listening to a Pusik. Because really it's just about, as much as it's about the meaning of the words, it's also just about the letters and the sounds and like the Hebrew letters were used to create the world and the fact that people are out there like listening and just miming those those letters it's a very special thing I think it's like it's a huge Kiddush Hashem I think yeah no for sure I, I think it's and I think and we touched upon this I think that the fact that you're sticking with the Hebrew the Hebrew words yeah. right you're yeah. You're that's sticking. the funny thing that's what broke it's like it was never right? the english stuff it's a head scratcher yeah so <laughs> I, I i think going back it's like these these words are um when i'm when i'm singing when i'm finding melody for a hebrew lyric mamish the pasuk or or uh for me that's such a deeper experience than trying to write my own lyric that's new like to be able to to connect a new melody to an ancient lyric that's you know gotten us through all of Jewish history up to the, up until this point to find melody for that is so precious for me so to and, and to actually make it lively that someone today who's ha, maybe have no connection to their to their ancestry or maybe isn't even Jewish but it's making a kiddush Hashem like that's that's a huge zechus on my part to be able to help. Um, find a melody that can just do that right to draw down one if you want to call it or if you want to call writing one composing one but it's very it's a big honor it's a big zechus and I I get to do it with my chavrusa over here zechaya yeah and I and it's interesting I again look we, when we're here setting up so it's 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 great maybe we'll show some of the b-roll over this whoever insert b-roll insert mm-hmm. b-roll footage really but um, you have Zach with his legs crossed over like a pad uh, this sound pad and you're pulling Sfarim off the shelf <laughs> like you're trying to write a Shabbos Shuvah <laughs> Drasha and, and then two minutes later you're sitting down and I can't even get out of my head what you were singing like it's yeah. it, that's how you build a song that's how, is that is that we, how you always built or is that like a new skill uh, I would say we, we were always gravitating towards Psukim or Divrei Tzadikim um, uh, Mamari Chazal something like that like for the most part, that's where we were orbiting around for lyrics. Um, but I guess what I would say is we kind of reversed the process that in general, we would first have like a melody that wasn't tied to any specific rhythm. It wasn't it had no specific rhythm in mind. Um, it was just more like uh, waltzy or, you know, whatever my style was, sentimental, romantic music. And then and then Zach and, and our producer would come in and we would kind of build around it. And he, Zach would come in with the rhythm with the rhythm of the guitar and then we would build the rhythm of the drums. And here Zach is is pushing to try to actually the reverse. Let's let's create um, compelling compelling rhythms that already are doing something. And they're 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 opening you up in a beautiful way and, yet, and there's not even words yet. And then once we have one rhythm, let's find another that complements that and another counter rhythm and, a, and maybe even a fourth or a fifth. We have all these different rhythmic components and it's already a gewaldic vibe that gets me mesmerized. And then the question is now, how could we put, how could we make this a deeper experience by bringing um, um, holy words to contemplate on, to be misbonen on? And, and that's where it gets exciting for me because, wow, like we... we you know these rhythms are already alive, and now we're makadesh those rhythms by by giving it like 
tochen pnimi, the inner inner yeah. content. Yeah, we cover we cover we cover different ground. Like yeah. we you know we split up. It's like that's I feel like that's that's the unique component where it's Barsha like, in the house has a lot of rooms. So you're able to be in different <laughs> rooms and you're able yeah. to you're able to be able to be creative. Um, do you see this sort of as? And for me, I think I, it's very clearly, but like this is a it's almost like here of in a way like you're you're put you're you're casting a wide net right you're you're creating call it content right sound and you're singing about things that are, are godly or about me- things that are meaningful and uh instead of casting the net into your little portion of the ocean you're casting it into the entire ocean to tens of millions of people and saying hey you know what there might be a jew in kansas that hears the words you know call yisrael and that might say, you know what? I think my mom was Jewish. Wasn't she Jewish? Don't you recognize these words? Like, imagine you made a song with the word Shema Yisrael, like, and that talks to a, a kid in Plano, Texas. Totally. Yeah. Do you see, Zach released one the other day that had Shema Yisrael in it. Do you see that as the Avaida? Is that a new Avaida for you guys? I always felt like our music was, like, we're the kind of musicians that should should be thinking about how can we reach that guy in in thing in what was it Plano. Kansas Plano Plano in Kansas Plano? I really I really like dug deep for these is Plano a place <laughs> listen is Plano a place yeah please it look is. that up we have I have cousins in Plano that must have been why <laughs> embarrassing I feel right. bad for them so. <laughs> appreciate you guys in Plano <laughs> yeah, Plano shout out to Plano <laughs> no I feel like uh, there's some to me I feel like there's some Jewish musicians not knocking them whatsoever but their music is really meant for the Jewish community like that's their it really speaks to them and that what their comfort zone is and that's like what they need yeah and they always felt like we never fit that mold and so to me it's always exciting when we're finally okay because we for a long time we we're playing in the jewish community we play a lot of events in the jewish community but i always felt like we have the ability to reach somebody that has no connection whatsoever just the slightest like desire to want something more in life and they see shlomo singing and they just hear the the the, the crooning yeah is that I a word? Think, <laughs> I, I, that's why I had to pause for a second. Is it a word? Yeah, yeah, I think crooning? Crooning. crooning? Crooning? I think that's a word. What does it mean? I think it's like when birds are <laughs> crooning yeah. to one another. Yeah. Can you look that up, please? Nice. Crooning? 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 It's birds. <laughs> that's, that's I think, listen, we, we reach a place where it's beyond it's beyond separateness, right? That's yeah. The, we live in the Ilama period of the, the world. Break down the barrier. There's, no ba- there's no barrier anymore. I think Zach very much lives in the Ilama Yichud, like where it's all unified. Like, Yeducha Amim Kulam, Yeducha Amim Ali Loisav, you know, that that, that uh, the, even the, the nations need a way to praise Hashem and need need content to praise Hashem. And this is perhaps ushering in such a state in the world and perhaps giving melodies to that as well. Yeah. It takes a, it takes a, a special amount of humility to be in an industry which you've been in for several years um creating a certain way and then to say hey you know what like let's just change everything <laughs> you know because there there are people who are who are in the, in the in the Jewish music industry or in the music industry in general that have been doing the same thing in terms of how they create music for the last 40 years 30 years 50 years and no knock on them it's been working great What's the process in in uh, I guess that that humility process of saying hey like let's change it all let's change the entire process. Well, I was I was personally very hesitant. Zach is uh, has a cheshek for for novelty and he doesn't want to be a graven image of himself. He doesn't want our music to just continue doing the same thing that it always did because then we're just a, you know we're just creating a statue and we're worshiping that statue as Rafinson talks about it. Whereas really Hashem is formless so Hashem is every possible image you could imagine and he's none of those images also and so for us what it means to be to, what it means to be musicians is you have to keep searching for what our music sounds like yesterday it sounded that way and to get too comfortable that way it sounded yesterday it's missing the opportunity yeah. of, of our music of today and Shir Lashem Shir Chadash so for Zach, it's like, okay, we did that really well, but I think we need something new. And I'm like, but Zach, but we, like, this is what we know. Like, this is what we've done. Like, we're just going to change. He's like, why not? So I think it, it comes more naturally to maybe Zachariah. But for me, um, it, that I was reluctant. I was very uh, hesitant. Um, but ultimately, I was moda to give it a shot. And I started to see the, how the engagement, how it was more miscabal. More people in Miskabo, both with regards to the Yidim 
um, in our inner circle, the first month, month and a half we were doing this. And as we were exploring during the Omer and continued, I saw that it reached even further um, and reached Yidin who you would never expect it to reach. And it even was Mekadosh Shem Shemayim. So we were at a we were at an event last night, and somebody came over to come over to me and said that um, their Irish Catholic coworker came over to them and said, "Hey, have you seen these guys?" <laughs> He's just like he was so he spoiled from that, and like it's just it's funny. It's mamish funny to see who's who's connecting. And um, I think for us, it was always the drive to connect to more people. Yeah, it was never like uh, should we. Sh- we never, even with our albums, we tried to do new things. So I think that our energy is like one of, uh, how can we keep it fresh? How can we keep it exciting? Yeah. And for us, it's like a balance of like, do what you're good at, but also try new things, you know? I, I think that um, the, just, you know, the, na- the name of this new segment, we're just doing like these mini little episodes, meaningful people on the road type things. Like, you know, Momo's not here with me. Mo, you know, next week we'll be back with Momo in the studio recording more episodes, but um the idea of spotlight, being able to just jump on a story that's rising and to give the insight. So the moment that you upload this new this new tune, uh, call it World to Come, to Instagram, and it starts just blowing up, what what are the conversations between you two like? Mm. What is, uh, like, keep, take me through those first moments that you're able to tell when something's like getting picked up and you're like, okay, whoa, what was that like? Mm. I think well first I put po- I posted on Instagram and it was doing okay it wasn't like yeah. certainly wasn't like exploding instantly and then if like an hour or two later I put it on TikTok and like TikTok started like to fly and I called Shlomo I was like first of all I was like bro do you know that we have a TikTok <laughs> <laughs> he's like no I didn't realize so I'm like I posted this video on our TikTok and it's just like going crazy bro it's got like ninety thousand views or something and we had like. 500 people following us 300 people following us i just opened the tiktok because i'm like so it started just going crazy on tiktok and then it just like a hundred thousand for us that was like tremendous yeah calling shloma i'm like dealing with the baby i'm like holding the baby like do you see what's going on like crying in the background it's like (laughs) and um and shloma was your what was your reaction like i was like that's pretty wild and then I, i looked it on instagram and uh, it, it was at first going a lot slower on Instagram, but then the way the algorithms work or something, the way Hashem Instagram works, continues. <laughs> now, the way Hashem works through Teva, that he, yeah. the man made Teva over here, is that it continued on, on Instagram, like for, and it's still continuing, but like it went, it started to pick up pace on Instagram and slowed down on TikTok, because TikTok is very, very swift, in and out. Like it, go, it becomes viral, and then it, a day yeah. or two later, done, day, you know. Um, but I guess I was just we were spending Shabbos together. <laughs> oh yeah, we were spending Shabbos. I think we were both just wowed by like. I came. Really? Here, I came here with my family. Our first Shabbos together in Shlomo's house. This is your first Shabbos together in Shlomo's house. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you come because to like to celebrate this? No. New... No, it wasn't even <laughs> totally unrelated. Totally but unrelated. it happens to be like we're together and we're like dreaming. The whole Shabbos are kind of like dreaming. Like what's next? What like what? Well, yeah. Our wives are for bringing. Yeah. <laughs> kids are running around do we like need jumping? like security now <laughs> like um so so but the cool thing is and this doesn't usually this doesn't happen with everybody you know a lot of times someone will post something on social media it'll go crazy viral and then they'll try to replicate that success and post another video and it's just like you're back to 63 views you know and, and two mm. comments but what's happening now is that you guys are constantly creating and you're at that point where everything is above six figures Two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. For the most part, yeah. That's that's incredible, and that comes with yeah. that comes with an incredible responsibility. So that that was kind of my first. It's a lot reaction. of pressure. What, what are you trying to say? I'm joking. <laughs> I think Zach is more of like a, a he's surfing the wave, you know, and that's more intuitive than just be benachas about everything. Yeah. But I'm I'm someone who's like, okay, now what's the avoda now? Like because up until now, I felt like we had a sense of like our avoda and how to relate to people and how to relate to our audience and our voice and everything and who our audience was. It's mostly it and a few, a few going, but at this point it was kind of like the tables are turned where it could be mamish the opposite now. You know, the, like our listening audience in Germany has peaked. They're the second <laughs> to the U.S. Country-wise, they're second to the U.S. and then Israel. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's from this song, from this one song. So you're saying you're going to be in Germany on tour soon? No, no, not. Listen, I don't know what, I, you know, the challenge for us is like, what's our music going to, what does a concert look like for us? Because obviously, who's in the crowd? 
forget about who's in the crowd like what does it sound like right because we have all this new stuff and then we have all this older stuff and they're completely different so yeah and and a lot of people who are just finding out about us may want to experience that yeah so do we play a com a combo of like what was what is which requires a completely different personnel completely different setup and it would be a completely different show so they don't really go together that's uh or do we focus on the new stuff and kind of just let that be the new sound for now and focus on that. so these are the questions that are inside these, yeah the inside for me scoop. it's also like the the panemius of like what does it mean to be mashpia not just a yidin but to be mashpia to goyim what does that look like and that's a conversation i have to have with rebeim and stuff and understand what that looks like and have you had that conversation yet it's not been time it's not been time it might be it might be time Shlomo. <laughs> <laughs> like right now no the point listen the, the simple answer is like you know we have to go and be a good example of what it means to be a Jewish person. I right? have to be kind, have to be giving, have to love our fellow and, and be respectful and and be creative and be uh, unique. So I think for us, our goal is not so much about the views, although it's like, it's we're like, folk, we kind of like focused in on, we, we yeah. have a good flow going now. I feel like, whereas probably two or three weeks ago, we were like, every time we met, like, what should we do? What kind of music should we make? Should it be a guitar? Should it be a banjo? Should it be a yeah? So now I feel like, like we focus. kind of have a little bit more focus in terms of like what what kind of music we want to make, and uh, our next goal is like to just record, 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 record. Yeah, don't stop recording. Yeah, I think ultimately there is like a theme. It's not like it's a complete change from everything we we're doing. You know, the theme is uplifting music. Before is more uplifting, slow, uplifting with you know organic instrumentation, acoustic stuff, and now it's like no auto tune. Like no no auto tune, never. Like now, it's like, I mean, from what I'm getting, everything auto tune. Like, <laughs> put auto tune on everything. I'm open to it, you know. Like, yeah, whatever's gonna be mekadesh and shemaim, whatever's gonna be ma'ari the levavos of klai I always said, if there's some goyim too, why not? Yeah. I always said like auto tune only works if you have a good voice. Yeah, for sure. If you're just using it as like a to hide something, it's not. Because I think like you'd be surprised that auto tune doesn't solve all your problems. You know, that's, you still, well, that's a divar right there, no? Yeah. <laughs> no, break it down. That's what I'm saying. Break like, it I down. Think, I think auto tune, you really need to have a good voice and you need to like know what notes you should be singing and how to sing them. It's still, there's still performance involved. It's not like you could just so slap what's, it what, what's, what's, what's the, what's the nimsha? Like what's auto tune in our lives? Uh, what's mm. auto tune in our lives? Um, well, I would say it's almost like you take a picture. That's a very good picture. And then you make a black and white. It already has to be a good picture to put a different filter and to bring yeah. out the effect of the black and white in the deepest way. If it's a bad picture and then you make a black and white to cover it up, it's not. That's not how you use it. So, I would say sim similarly, like it's really powerful to 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 use different filters on the sound of a voice of a holy, hopefully a ho holy yid. Every yid is holy, right? So a simple Jew singing their heart out sing to Hashem like singing open the psukim to another yid um, like hopefully that that itself is powerful and now you're putting a filter on that that's kind of like altering the experience but the panemius is the same the panemius is the same but the but the expression is different but the the inner thing never changed hopefully it has to start with someone singing from a real place from a place of MS and things that come from the heart and, and hopefully from the heart in, a, in an emes dig away will enter the heart in an emes dig away and then you now you're just putting on a different color you're just changing the colors yeah. what, are, what, are the, what are the dms been like i mean you're when you go that viral you're getting a lot of messages i imagine and and there's a lot of different uh opinions and stuff what's that look like overall? we have a we have a whatsapp group slow myself mm -hmm. that's called just a whatsapp back and forth <laughs> uh, no it's it's like something like why we do what we do yeah something like that where we'll like screenshot a bunch of messages and mm -hmm. just keep them in one place so that we can like go back and if we're ever like why are we doing this type of thing but it's been crazy i mean a lot of people that reach out and say like i have no connection to my judaism and i'm just inspired a lot of people like i have anxiety or uh, stress or i just needed this to like be okay and it's just amazing what you can do from your living room in terms of inspiring you know because like that's pretty cool though like that's a deep lesson right there it's like i think it's a lesson for everyone who's doing whatever you're doing you, you can accomplish so much nowadays it's crazy yeah, even like i think someone uh, a, a christian individual who's who reached out to us saying that it like brought them closer to their faith 
Like they were hearing us doing our thing. Yeah. Like it just brought them closer to their thing, which is, which is beautiful to see people just become committed to what they already committed to. <laughs> yeah. Listen, the Rebbe, the Rebbe was uh, a big advocate and his Hasidim are still advocates of introducing a moment of silence in classrooms around the world in public schools. Hmm. He thinks the Rebbe, the Rebbe felt that it would be a big service to everyone for their mental health before you go into a busy day to just close your eyes and spend it alone with yourself. 100%. And I think that it could be that your music is that is that moment of silence. That hmm. thing you're yeah. doing for them is sort of like, it's holy. Yeah. Like you said, the words that come from the heart penetrate the heart. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. Like, it's funny to hear like a, like record labels call us. That's awesome. And say something like, I don't know what the heck you're saying, but it just, it just inspired me. It just, I feel it, you know? And I think that's like a, the most powerful thing we can do in terms of relating to the world is and just their mamish alive like the way they're <laughs> saying with with the brent you know with the fire yeah it's wild would you guys um if you if, i remember the last time you were on meaningful people i think you sang a song um i want to ask you two things one would you sing world to come like acoustic right now stam i don't have a guitar do you have a guitar i don't have a guitar i don't have a guitar i'm sorry if we if i had some instrument i would sing it I don't want to butcher it. The truth is, like, we re- we recorded it. Right. And we probably haven't played it since. Oh, no? So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I would say that uh, I don't want the worldwide premiere to be the, the first time we're singing it. Since, Fine. Uh, I'm gonna, so, how about this? I, I have, I have, I did a podcast, A Meaningful People, uh, myself and Momo, with a girl named Rivka Shotkin. Uh, she was in a skiing accident. She became paralyzed from the waist down. And she was listening to a song. And one of the, one of the lines in the song I don't want to mess it up here. Okay. One of the lines of the song was, Don't be afraid of the pain. That was a line that she heard. And she heard that, um, I think it was four days before her accident. And her father was explaining to her the words, don't be afraid of the pain. She held on, she holds on to, to today. Like she's 17 years old. She's wheeling around. She holds on to those words. Don't be afraid of the pain. Don't be afraid of the pain. With those, with those words, can I challenge you to build a song? Lo Don't Can we be change the words. Don't be afraid of the light. You you could run with it. Okay. Should we do it right now? Not not to be afraid of the harchava. Let's go for it. Do it right now. I love the reframe of "Don't be afraid of the light." Yeah, don't be afraid of the light. Go for it. I 
לאן אתה הולך אל האור לא לפחד מן האושך לא לפחד מן האושך לא לפחד מן האושך you you just wrote that yeah just now yeah no one second how do you just do that you just one second you guys didn't even communicate no no you started playing and you <laughs> so i'm saying we covered different ground <laughs> <laughs> what how did you do that what, what i i what explain i guess the, the translation what were the words you were saying I was inspired by my Rav of Pinson. Um, he brought from some unusual source, that uh, some rare source, that there is a complementary um, kind of like Mishnah, not exactly a Mishnah, but a teaching, com- uh, parallel to the teaching in Pirkei Avos, which is Me'ayin Bata, saying, Tipa Sucha, Ma'anat Alech, El Rima V'Sayleya, right, to the worms. And it's like there's a, a different teaching that he brought. Um, and he was kind of saying the concept was, you know, where do you come from? You come from light. Where are you going? You're going to light. It's like one is like a, a, the Musar movement telling you about yourself, yeah. where you come from, where you're going. And one is Hasidus and where it's telling you, you come from light and you're going to light. And don't be afraid of your light. You know? Oh, my gosh. There's a lot of pain. <laughs> That's why I didn't really want to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. But don't be afraid of the light. I think that's what we're even more scared of. Mm. Wow. I think you guys just wrote another hit, no? <laughs> I don't know what's a hit and what's not. It's just, the <laughs> island will tell us what's a hit. You're being serious. You just... <laughs> what's a hit? <laughs> yeah. A hit well, should a really... Hit. It, should, it should tap onto the heart of stone and transform it to the heart of flesh. You know, lays basa. That should, that's a kosher hit. Yeah. Kosher is something which transforms your heart from wow. coldness to warmth and to, you know, flexibility and and the sensitivity towards others. Beautiful, Vibe beautiful. Out. Well, thank you for for being the first on this new spotlight series. Mm. You guys are are spreading a tremendous amount of light, and I think that if if anyone can get anything from this episode of of the spotlight series is to not be afraid of the light, like we just sang, <laughs> to not be afraid of the spotlight even. Because uh, we're here to spread light. So don't be afraid. Unbelievable. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Tzadik. Of course. Thank you for having us. Hope you enjoyed this Spotlight Edition episode of Meaningful People. Uh, They are awesome. I love their music. And how about that song they wrote on the spot? Kind of blew me away. Maybe you'll see that on Spotify. Uh, Drop a comment here on YouTube if you think you you should see it on Spotify. Uh, Really, really incredible experience with those guys. Once again, going to be back in the studio next week, coming your way with more episodes with Momo Bauman and Meaningful People Podcast. So stay tuned and please leave a rating, review, subscribe to this channel. And we hope and we can't wait to bring you more content. See you. Hope you enjoyed this video from Meaningful Minute. We have so much more content for you. You may like this. You may like this. Take your pick. Let us know what you think.